This isn't a relic of the silver screen. It's a brand new Aston Martin DB5 made right here. Aston Martin works in Newport Pagnell. 25 of them are going to be made in total, each one costing £2.75 million before any taxes. It's the second most expensive Aston Martin ever made. But there's a twist. This freshly minted DB5 isn't road legal. It is in fact one of the most expensive toys on the planet. It's called the DB5 Goldfinger Continuation, and it's about as close as any Bond fan will get to owning 007's wheels. Each one takes around 4,500 hours to make, compared with the 500 hour build time of an original DB5 Vantage. While it's built to be as representative of the original DB5 as possible, it also slips into character as the very car driven by Sean Connery's Bond in the film it takes its name from. That means alongside the authentic mild steel birdcage style chassis, beautifully hand beaten and shaped panelwork, and the 290 brake horsepower triple carburetor fed 4 litre straight 6. The company's skilled hands, with help from special effects legend Chris Corbold, have modified the car to feature working gadgets lifted straight from fiction. So let me just talk you through some of the gadgets here at the front. Three license plates on a revolving Toblerone, a British one, a French one, a Swiss one, exactly as you'd have it on the silver screen. Guns, of course, it wouldn't be the DB5 without guns, and these ones are packaged into the front axles. On the original movie cars, they had a problem with the guns because they'd restrict the amount of turn in the wheels. These ones are so compact that the wheels can turn completely naturally, they pop out the same length, and they play a sound clip from a real Browning machine gun. Finished, of course, with the battering rams, which you'll also find at the rear. There's a pop-up bullet shield that's actually bulletproof. This is the simulated oil slick delivery system. To avoid making too much of a mess, it actually shoots water. You could probably dye it black for a more realistic look, though. There's also a powerful smokescreen system integrated into the rear floor of the car. And finally, in the boot, what every aspiring double-O agent needs, a tire shredding kit. Avoid multi-storey car parks. So inside, it's a beautiful, faithful recreation of Bond's DB5. Of course, finished with the most famous red button in movie history. Sadly, the button doesn't really engage a real ejector seat. It's a health and safety hazard too far. However, buyers can opt to have a removable roof flap installed. Press the secret button down here and you'll find the navigation system. Open up the armrest and of course you've got all the switches for every single gadget on the car. But also, the one thing that Bond didn't get is found here. It's a small portable box for remote access to every single gadget. Good if you're a bit of a show off, I guess. What about the telephone, you ask? You can connect it to your smartphone. So those well healed enough to buy the DB5 Goldfinger are certainly in for a lot of fun. And they'll be getting a legitimate Aston Martin DB5 straight from Newport Pagnell, with every Bond gadget signed off with the company's blessing. That's quite extraordinary for the customers, but what does it mean for the company? We asked the man with the Midas touch, Paul Spires, Managing Director of Aston Martin Works. Do you have to be quite delicate or sensitive when it comes to the owners of the original cars? Absolutely. It's one of the things we're very, very conscious of. We don't want to upset owners of the original cars. Quite the reverse. What we try to do is actually enhance the values of the original cars. Uh, the continuation cars also enable us to offer owners of the original cars a lot of the uh, parts to a higher quality and parts that weren't available previously. So I think all round, it is a bit of a win-win situation. So in 10 years time, which one's going to be more valuable, one of these or an original DB5? That's a very, very good question. There's a lot of people that think that the continuation cars may potentially be more valuable than the original cars because of uh, the heritage and the way that they've been manufactured. For me, I think if that were the case, it's a fantastic recommendation, not only to the team that have uh, engineered and designed the car, but also for DB5, which is undoubtedly the iconic moment in Aston Martin's history. Aston certainly seems confident that the Goldfinger cars won't trample on the heritage of the 900 or so original hardtop DB5s. But what are your thoughts? Is the DB5 Goldfinger the car of your dreams, or is it a bit kitsch? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below.